And what God has been doing and has just chosen to do is the intention, obviously, is to bring people into relationship and for that relationship to bring people into identity. And that identity will then align itself with God's purpose as sons in sonship. Um, now, throughout history, um, we have different periods of time where God has worked in different ways. And when you look back at the early church, Although the early church were closest to Jesus, they were also closest to the old covenant way of doing things. And the, the Jewish people still struggled with the Gentiles even being accepted into God's kingdom. So although they were close to Jesus and they had experienced the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit came in them, um, that didn't mean that theologically they knew it all. They still didn't get it. Uh, because the spirit needed to bring that out in practice so hence peter had the vision of the sheet and the unclean animals take and eat um, which challenged him and he was still challenged by those who were wanting to bring new christians back into old covenant ways the judaizer party and he was pressured and peter himself was pressured not to eat with gentiles and paul called him out so it's such a strong um religious delusion which was very difficult for them which is why jesus gave them a generation to um bring as many people out of that old into the new before the end of the old finally came and jerusalem and the, the temple and the heavens and the earth as it was known came to an end and not one stone was standing as jesus prophesied in matthew 24 that generation there was a lot that was going to take place the tribulation of those days the gospels being spread throughout the world you know wars rumors of wars all those things that jesus said look this is going to be a difficult period persecution is guaranteed so you need to be careful and you need to be aware and you need to keep your eyes out for the signs that i give you so you're ready so there was this sense where in that generation the end was going to come and therefore that transitional generation is not something that we can take an example of today because they were in a transition where we've been 1600 years or 1800 years or more 1900 years 2000 years out of that transition so we don't understand what they were going through now jesus gave them some warnings one of the warnings was to be aware of the leaven of Herod and the Pharisees. In other words, the infiltration of false doctrine that would bring you under the religious or the political spirit or both. And they work together, obviously. And the political and religious spirit were very powerful. And you know, in my latest book, I go into the religious and political spirit and, and its symptoms and how it works. Um, and when you look at those early church, the religious spirit was looking to persecute. The political spirit was looking to control um, and they were in a, in a very difficult situation waiting for Jesus to come to bring about what he promised in that generation. And eventually he came and ended the old and, and the new was fully fledged. But that doesn't mean that they were perfect. Obviously, they still had the to process everything that was going to take place and they didn't get it all in fact jesus said to them you know there's many things i would like to teach you but you're not able to bear it and he said to nicodemus you know i'm talking to you about heavenly things with an earthly uh, illustration you don't get it how are you going to get heavenly things that don't have earthly illustrations so there was so much that they were um, at the in those days not able to fully appreciate now you could say um that um, god was at work to bring about the restoration of all things and they were in the period of the beginning of the restoration of all things but restoration is a process and ultimately there were things working against that the luciferian agenda to keep the world in darkness in delusion to keep people from the truth um was in place and the religious and political spirit were outworking that agenda to keep the world from knowing the truth and that's the difficulty so the early church fathers had an amazing revelation of various things in terms of the issues that we are now just getting revelation of they had revelation of inclusion paul's gospel is a gospel of inclusion 
they they didn't believe in the evangelical version of salvation or hell or any lots of things so they their writings uh were pretty amazing some of them um into they had a greater understanding of jesus message and who he was than we have today in some ways now right throughout history there have been those who have had mystical experiences and have had revelation of their identity and have had intimacy with the father um but they were sort of odd people here and there rather than a movement that would bring the church fully into the revelation of who they are and open that gospel up to the world so the world would know the truth of who they are now <clears throat> how far were the church along well i don't think they were that far along during that transition period because that was the issue they were preparing to hang on until the end came and then after the end came and we entered into a time where mostly the persecution was political through rome um the religious persecution of the jewish people thing ended but the roman persecution carried on and then eventually you know when constantine did assimilate christian religion and take it on and then messed it up and then you then have all of the fears that came along with um losing touch with the truth and therefore for the fear of having to get the code you know the truth down because people might miss you know they lost the whole sense of the spirit which is why when the bible was produced suddenly they started to depend on the knowledge of a book rather than the life in the spirit which they had done for the first 385 years to which the gospel did spread throughout the world at that period of time you know and you could say in one sense the gospel has been relatively successful in that 2.4 billion people say that they have they believe in jesus you know and would say that they were christian so that is quite a, an increase from 12 disciples and 500 people on the day of pentecost you know and you know and the ascension when there were a small number of people there um you know things have increased but the quality probably hasn't increased as much as the quantity and i think that's what god is wanting to do is bring us back to the real quality of relationship free us from the religious stuff that we've absorbed over the years um, and centuries and bring us back to the purity and the simplicity of relationship as sons and that heaven is open and that we can access that realm to facilitate the kingdom of god and the restoration of all things so subsequent with the resurrection um there's the sense of jesus's resurrection in which everyone became born again or born from above and he breathed his spirit in his disciples which brought life and the spirit into every person were they aware of that fully no because they didn't recognize the spirit the disciples were aware of it as jesus promised in john 14 that on that day they would know that the spirit was in them and they were in jesus and jesus was in the father and this amazing relationship had taken place for most people that became a wrestling i think conscience became awakened the spirit became awakened in people then there was a wrestling between the spirit and the flesh and some people like paul wanted self-righteously to follow their own way and their own religion therefore they resisted the spirit's work in them in galatians 1 16 where, where the paul said you know the father was pleased to reveal his son in me you know that re that was paul's message he had this heavenly vision and he had this heavenly commission to go and preach christ in the gentiles to tell the gentiles that they were reconciled to tell the gentiles that there was no longer a division between god and them and the jews and the gentiles there now there was no jew gentile there was one new man in christ paul had amazing revelation he obviously went into the realms of heaven was given amazing revelation to enable the gentiles to come into the knowledge of the truth and to stand the persecution that was going and the pressure so i don't think that they the world fully understood but something changed because if the spirit wasn't in them how would they ever come to a knowledge of the truth because it's spiritually received you know our message of the gospel today i don't believe is is accurate at all you know which is to reverse everything into when we do something god does something now the reality is god's done something which enables us to do something a huge thing i live by the faith of the son of god or from the son of god not my faith but his 
It's what he believes about me is important, not what I believe about him. It's not a belief system, but a relationship. That was facilitated in the, the Holy Spirit working with the person spirit to bring the soul into a realization of life that began to take place. And that's why the gospel spread around the world. Was it perfect? And did they have perfect understanding? No, but they had a relationship. And the relationship is what has been spread around the world. And when they started to, to spread belief systems by the sword with Christendom and crusades and all the other things, that's when it all got messed up. Went away from the simplicity of relationship into institution. And you will believe by the power of the sword. And they lost completely the message of love because it became a message um, of religion and forced religion at that. So God is restoring us back to love. And I believe that um, the more people awaken to love and unconditional love, the more that people will come into a reality of how we can demonstrate the love of God to the world in which we live. And therefore, we will be closer and closer to seeing the awakening that we're looking for and to see sonship at work. But there's always going to be forerunners. There's always going to be those who go ahead to prepare the way. And I think that's who we are. And we're preparing the way for the next. That's what Joshua and Caleb were, preparing the way. for the, And we're preparing the way not for the church, but we're preparing the way for the world to awaken to the reality of God. There are many in the church who probably won't awaken at this point because they're stuck in religion. But God's still at work with them. But God is working with those who are more open, I believe. And we're finding an awakening to love taking place in the world. And I believe this will take place more and more. But I, I'm not going to put a, a, a name, a date on it, because you can't. You know, we're looking at generations, not just years, I don't believe. But, you know, God is able if we engage. So the more sons who arise, the more likely it is that this process will increase and speed up. And accelerate to the point where the world is more and more awakened to the truth of who God is in love. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.